The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Andrea Herzer knows the hardships of undergoing over 100 medical procedures. In my heart, I was bitter. Mm. I didn't understand why the Lord had allowed that level of suffering. And so I had to work through some really foundational issues with the concept of suffering. Why does a good God allow deep suffering? Helping others find lasting hope for lingering health issues, next on Life Today. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson, and Tammy is with me. And, and hey, Randy. You know, there's some times, Tammy, where you encounter someone, and it's God in them, but they minister to you in such a way that uh, it, it goes deep. Yes. And that happened in a Zoom conversation with our guest, Andrea Herzer. Welcome. Thank mm. you. Thank you for and, having and me. And so I, I am glad you're here. It's been a little bit difficult uh, getting you here. How are you doing today? Honestly, today is a little bit of a tough day. Yeah, mm. yeah. As many people with chronic pain and health issues can attest, um, there are nights where we have insomnia and we can't sleep and the pain just won't quit. Mm. So, but I know that in my weakness, he is strong mm. and I'm here in his strength today. So I'm grateful to be here. We're glad to have you here. Your, your book is called Incurable Faith. Uh, it's available now. People are going to want to get it, and we'll, we'll tell people how to get it. Um, but you, you have gone through a lot of pain. You're still going through pain. Yes. But your faith, you say, is strong. Mm, that's right. How does that even even work? Because it's it's that's a that's a hard part for a lot of people who are suffering chronic yes, pain. Yes, it's true, and it's it needs to be something that is very intentional. I had walked with the Lord for about a decade before I was stricken by my health issues. And I had already put in place the rhythms of a spiritual life, which was reading my Bible every day. As you can tell, it's falling apart, <laughs> but reading my Bible daily and prayer and meeting with other believers and fellowship. And so those rhythms that even when I didn't feel like it, I continued to press in to the Lord. Um, and, and on the days when I was fully bedridden, I would just lie there and, and begin to praise him in my pain. And it would take my mind off of the, the depth of, of the, just the sharpness and the burning that happens with the type of pain that I have. And it would lift my mind up into his presence and fill me with Holy Spirit-led joy. Mm. Because joy is a gift of the Spirit. It's not something we have to manufacture. Mm. So I think those are the things that help keep me strong amid this journey. And a little life today on television? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Can I tell you that yes. story? Yes. So I have had health issues for over 20 years now, mm. serious debilitating health issues. Mm. And there was a very long season where I was completely bedridden. I could, I could leave my bed if I used a walker or a scooter mm. because of the depth of my neurological disease and the depth of the pain involved in walking. So I would just lie there feeling lonely, wanting comfort, wanting fellowship, and the fellowship that came into my home every day was through this show, Life Today. And, um, and it, at the time, it was your dad sure. and your mom, James and Betty, and they just would minister to my heart. And so what a beautiful, redemptive God we have that he would bring me here today to minister to others who might feel alone or afraid are weary of their health issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I have to say, it's because of viewers just like you that put Life Today on the air that we were able to minister to Andrea, and she's here today to minister to you. So for all of you that support Life Today, thank you. But Andrea, yes. would you tell us what you're, you're facing? What are these neurological issues and the other things that have come along? Well, my health 
journey started uh, shortly after the birth of our third child. And it began with feeling like I had the flu that never went away. Mm. My joints felt like they were being stabbed. I had burning through my whole body. It was hard to even lift my arms. It felt like there was a weight of gravity that was just heavier on me. And I had difficulty feeding my child. I'd have to brace one arm with the other. Mm. So understandably, I pursued healing. And I received a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, interstitial cystitis, and a few other related issues. Um, and I just did everything I could. And a year after I started writing, I had an accident to my left hand, my writing hand, and received a diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome, which is a neurological disease and it's debilitatingly painful. Mm. So it spread to both limbs, spread to my feet, my ankles, my knees, and I was in a scooter and a walker, could not take a step out of bed without, without that walker. And then I was diagnosed with two types of advanced stage cancer and one was aggressive. But I can say that with a smile on my face because by that time, I knew the Lord's faithfulness. I knew his strength amid mm. suffering. And I knew that if he allowed that for me, he was going to bring redemption into it. It was going to be a ministry of life and peace to others because mm. Jesus was in the midst of it. Mm. And I also found that cancer was just the specific address where Jesus wanted to meet me. And he did. And he continues to meet me because I continue to struggle with cancer. I just battled it again this past year. And nine weeks ago, I was in the hospital with COVID pneumonia mm. and, uh, and a dangerous blood infection. And then I ended up having to have you know, a bronchoscopy and then they found heart issues. So it's, Andrea, it's a journey. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I know I have to, we, my wow. husband and I, humor is a big thing in our home. We almost have to laugh about it. But <laughs> when I was first told, oh yes, I know you're having lung issues and you're having sinus issues and you haven't kicked COVID, but now you have to go to a cardiologist. I just sat in silence before the Lord. I, I just felt like, okay, this is too much. I can't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. The very next day I woke up and what was, what was just resounding on my mind was my body is bought at a price. I am not my own. My body belongs to you, Lord. And if you want to allow something so that you're going to use me in a way and in an area that I wouldn't go to otherwise, who am I to deny my Lord any part of my body? Cause he didn't withhold his whole being for us. When do you say, it is enough. God, I can't take one more thing. And, and finding strength in him through all of this, like I'm mm -hmm. amazed when, when you tell me, I, I don't know how I would do. I think you would have to set your mind on the eternal yes. all the time. Yes. Like I'm in so much pain, That's this right. hurts, I can't move. Everybody is experiencing life to the fullest and I'm sitting here mm -hmm. and I'm not happy about it, God. I think, I think we can be honest with that. There's nothing that's making me happy, but I can still find joy, which is a very different thing than happiness. But there's so many people that are probably been watching today that just feel like I have shouted, it's enough, mm -hmm. I can't take one more thing. What would you say, that, what encouragement would you give them to find strength in the midst of this moment? Because I'm sure right. it's, it's moment it by moment. It is moment, moment by, by moment. moment. Because God's grace is moment by moment. Yes. And so I, you mentioned something, and I think I want to back up to this. You said everyone else is experiencing life to the fullest. Yes. And the truth is they might be busy. They might be doing activities, but me lying bedridden in bed praising Jesus, that is life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. The abundant right. life doesn't consist in the activities that we do or the places we go or the people we know, right? Yes, and, that's and we so know good, that. Andrea, so good. Yes. Because we, we I had to learn that the yeah, hard I way. Say, I was going to say, <laughs> I didn't know that 20 years that's ago. That's right. You had to learn it. That's and right. so there might be that's somebody right. else on the other side too that says, okay, I get what she just said. And maybe mm. this is, I've got to change my thinking on this. Yes. Cause here's the thing. Jesus promises an abundant life to all of his believers, he, he, followers. He doesn't say, 
you're going to receive an abundant life if you're healthy or if life is going well. And the truth is that his abundance is everlasting. It never runs out. And so I really did have to struggle through how do I define abundance mm -hmm. and the abundant life actually equips us to live victoriously amid Through all of our all. challenges. That's yes. right. Yes. That's right. Uh, interestingly, there is this thought in the church today a little bit mm -hmm. that, um, you know, if I follow Jesus, I'm going to have an easy life. Mm. Um, yeah. If I get sick, healing's guaranteed right. in this life. Right. Um, what do you think about those ideas? Did you ever have any of those ideas? I absolutely had some of those ideas. And, and basically, people were telling that to me. You know, if you had enough faith, you'd oh, be healed. Yeah. Or God doesn't want you to be sick or disabled. And I would think, well, I've confessed every sin that I could possibly think of over and over for years. <laughs> yes. And it keeps getting worse, <laughs> right? <laughs> like every, more things keep happening because our bodies are complex and they are, yeah. they're wonderfully made. And so, you know, when one part starts breaking down, oftentimes it impacts other areas. So in my journey, and I do talk about this in my book, but what I, what I came to discover is that people might want to focus on God's power with miraculous healing. And I just heard a sermon like that this, this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord does miraculously heal in some cases, and we know that. And I've actually had some of those things happen in my own life. And so I think we can unnecessarily discourage those with health issues when we tell them this is the box that God is going to yeah. fit you in. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, and I think we do a disservice. Even, you know, the, the paralytic who was let down through the roof mm -hmm. because he needed physical healing, Jesus first said, your sins are forgiven. That's right. And then he healed his body. Right. So he can do that. But to me, I go, the priority here, the order of things mm. is e eternal. You That's know, right. Everybody that Jesus healed died eventually. That's right. Even Lazarus, that he rose from true. the grave. Yes. I tell people that he all the time. Died again, <laughs> it's true. Right? You yes. know? Yes. But the eternal things are really what he's after. Mm. And and yes. so, man, if I'm sick, I'm going to the doctor and I'm praying for healing. I, I would never sure. condemn anyone for doing that. Right. You know, I'm, I'm going to do everything I can. Yes. But I think what I hear you saying is that the faith needs to be incurable. In other words, yes, that's right. The faith outlasts all the flesh stuff. Because I think our health issues do tempt us to focus on the temporal. Right. Yeah. We begin that almost like healing and, and the health of our bodies becomes a God, truly. Yeah. And yeah. This, these bodies are not going to last forever. And praise God for that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this body to last forever. Mm. I, I have the hope of salvation through Christ. And Jesus is my hope. You know, I ask people, where's your hope? What are you anchoring your soul to? Is it through temporary healing mm -hmm. that may or may not last? It's mm, good. Or is it going to be in Jesus Christ, the fulfillment of all of our faith? Yeah. It's that same thought. Are, are we constantly focused on our healing yes. rather than the healer? It's so, exactly You true. know, so I, when you change that, uh, again, it goes back to the eternal. Um, I, I think if I'm constantly just thinking about this, 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 I think it just goes, it, it feels more hopeless. So if you can somehow switch that even a little bit each day into the hope and into the healer, I think even in the worst of situations, like I don't know what it feels like to be housebound or bedridden. Um, when I think about your life, Andrea, just kind of, um, it knocks me out a little bit because I just, I don't know the weight that uh, you carry every single day sitting in this chair. Um, I know it's hard for you. I know you, the way you walked in, the way you have to set, the shoes you have to wear, I mean, everything. I know you're in pain right now. So your gift to us right now, just being here is enormous and to people watching is enormous. Many times when we're writing a book, it might take three months, six months, it depends, but an incurable faith 
you spent many years writing this. 16 years. 16 years journaling, journaling for the person that's maybe sitting in bed, sitting at home that feels like I'm just, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to pray. My healing this side of heaven probably will never come, but how can I steward this pain well? And I think mm -hmm. this book will help people navigate through that, your gift. And, and one that resonated so much with me was a devotion called Breakthrough Pain. I just want to read a little bit, if I can, because I think people might relate to this as much as I did. Every part of me is affected when I am in a pain flare. Gravity presses on my burning muscles until they become heavy under the weight. I feel nothing but the burning and stinging and crushing. That is my pain. My thoughts become scattered and lost in the fog that pain creates. Pain builds a wall that blocks my vision so that I lose my sight of hope. I may be cut off from the vigor of health, but I'm never cut off from the Lord. Nothing, not trouble or hardship or affliction or pain or illness can separate me from the love of Christ. His love helps me rise and more than conquer the tyranny of pain. It will not reign over me. The Lord helps me rise even on the days when I cannot get out of this bed. I rise up in faith through prayer. I rise into thanksgiving by singing praise songs. I rise up out of despair by listening to gospel music. My prayer, my praise, and the singing voices of other believers converge to lift my spirit up, 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 out of my pain and into God's presence. His presence is peace. His presence is joy. His presence is comfort. Pain. I'm sorry. Pain with all its trickery and wiles cannot enter the sacred space in your life. The wall that pain That's built right. is shattered. My spirit is restored. Gosh, um, to me, that's a declaration that even though things are falling apart around you, your spirit is strong and it is being restored every single day. Moment you speak by life mm -hmm. moment by moment. Mm -hmm. You speak life through every word. There's nothing wasted in this book. For anybody that is on the other side right now watching that says, I, I get that. That is me. I want you to know that God sees you, he is for you, and he is capable of restoring every ounce, every fiber of your life right now, even through the pain. He's not surprised, he's in the details. And so you don't have to be isolated, you don't have to be alone, the Holy Spirit is filling that room right now and covering you and breathing life into your direction. We love you. There are people here right now that will pray with you. There is a number on your screen. If you need prayer, if you feel without words right now, but you need somebody to just stand in the gap and pray with you, then call us right now. We would be honored to pray with you through this moment in your life to help you get to another moment. So go to the phone and give us a call so we can stand with you and agree with you. <sighs> How did your own words hit you just now? Well, I was two things were happening. I was praying for the people who were hearing that mm -hmm. and either know what it's like to feel the pain, but don't yet know what it's like to feel the comfort and the peace and the presence of God in their pain. Mm -hmm. And I was praying for the ones who need that food, need to know that it's possible. And then I was also just um, remembering where that poured out from and that, that time when I started discovering the truth of worshiping God well bedridden and well in pain. Mm -hmm. And I did the best job I could to put it into words, but, <laughs> but it's, a, it's a spiritual experience that, that yeah. just defies explanation. But it is the comfort of Christ. Yes, it and is. And he is our companion in suffering it's the Lord becomes a very real, a very present help in time of trouble. Mm. And I've found that to be true. 
Love it. Uh, so, so good. I, I oh appreciate you so much. Listen, some of you um, really will, will want to pick this book up. In fact, we will send it to you today. Yeah. If you will help us as we reach out to those who are suffering, mm -hmm. people who feel like no one sees them, people who are in physical pain, you can be the expression of God in their lives today. And if you, if you want Andrew's book, Incurable Faith, we ask you to participate in, in this outreach, Mission Feeding, um, and we will happily send it to you. But either way, you need to know today that God is with you. He sees you in your suffering. He is there for comfort uh, and to give you an eternal perspective to see what's important as you go through your pain. But for those of you who feel compelled by the Lord to join us in this, watch this real quickly, and then we'll tell you how you can reach others with the love of Christ. Within the life of every child is God-given potential. We can see it in the dreams these children have for their future. Though he lives a meager life and has few possessions, Fernando dreams of moving to a city to become an architect. He'll design a school for Antonio, who dreams of becoming a teacher. He'll design a hospital for Rosa, who dreams of becoming a doctor. Who would have thought children with so little would have dreams so big? But Fernando's mother knows that his chances for realizing his dreams are slim. She knows the painful reality that his food supply is unstable at best and during lean months, completely depleted. Already, the scarcity of food has led to the deaths of many children and with it, their chance of a dream extinguished. The biggest obstacle for children like Fernando is simply the lack of food. Food. It's as simple as that. By helping to provide just one child like Fernando with a daily bowl of food, you'll be making a world of difference, not only for him, but for every child who is holding on to a dream. These children have big dreams, and I want to help them keep those dreams alive by keeping them alive. That little guy that was just holding that bowl at the very end, Randy, it's just like, could you, yeah. would you, would you help? I mean, we're thinking food, we've got to keep them alive, but they're, they're dreaming outside of even that, probably not even realizing it comes down to that bowl of food for many of these children very life that is represented in this bowl to keep them alive, not just their bodies, but their dreams. They want to go on to do great big things. And I think that's what I love so much about being a part of this. When I get to go over there and I'm scooping out of that big, uh, goodness, what is that? That big barrel. Yes, yeah. yes, right. And I'm filling that up and I'm passing it on. It's like, God bless you. God bless you. It's so exciting. Okay. But it's also heartbreaking when you know that there's a significant need out there. And if we don't step in, many of them will stop dreaming. Yeah, well, I mean, the worst thing in the world, and I, I think you went to it, I know I've been to it in Angola, is the cemetery mm -hmm. where they've already pre-dug the graves. Oh, yes. They, they dig graves with the expectation, based on past experience, that those graves will soon be filled, and they're short graves. And you know it's children, and it's heartbreaking. It's mm -hmm. very hard to see. And that's why, I, I, you know, the hope of mission feeding, Tammy, mm. is that hope of a future. Yes. Because we go in in that emergency time and yes. we get them through that mm. stretch. Mm -hmm. And most of our, our feeding programs are in schools. You know this That's as well. That's right. Yeah, we're in schools. It, this awesome. is This is a comprehensive program that mm -hmm. we're talking about here and it's effective, mm -hmm. it works. Yes. It gives children a future and it gives us the opportunity to share the love of Christ with them. Yeah. And you can't help but wonder, maybe this is just God's way of taking a bad situation where there's hunger and starvation and death and making it something good. Mm -hmm. So they hear the gospel, they hear that hope for a future in Christ. Amen. So much going on here. Our part is obedience, the results are up to God. 
In fact, your gift of $30 today will help feed three children for the next three months. A gift of 50 will feed five children for the next several months. Many of you can give $100 for 10 children. Some of you can give $1,000 or more, which will give that opportunity to 100, maybe hundreds of children. I'm just asking you to do what you can, what God puts on your heart to give them that hope and a future. This is something we can do, mm -hmm. but we can only do it with your support. Will you go to the phone or go on the line and make the best gifts you can? Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or ten children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you the brand new Life Planner. Bound in soft touch leather, this planner will help you with your daily walk with space for you to record your appointments, goals, inspirational notes, and prayers. With your gift of $100 or more, please request the God's Promise Serving Bowl. This beautiful and versatile ceramic bowl is decorated with 2 Corinthians 9, 8 and will make a lovely addition to your table or home. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds, inspired by Jesus' words in Matthew 6, 26. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Thank you so much for coming alongside us in this vision that we are so passionate about. Uh, and listen, we want to send you this book, Incurable Faith. It's probably something that you think you might uh, want, but I believe it's something that you need today. So when you call uh, and partner with us, we want to make sure to send this to you. Just make sure to request it. We'll get it right out. Andrea, my goodness, what a blessing it is to have you here. I know what it took to get here. Mm -hmm. So thank you for giving this gift to all of us today that are watching at Life Today. We truly love you and care about you. And I will pray for you often. I promise you that. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time on Life Today. Next week, through life today, through the life of James and Betty, there is a generation that refuses to lean one way or another. We stand. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.